Tell it about Hanako-kun Volume 0 Review. Before I tell about Hanako-kun becomes a series we come to know and love, it first had a 3 chapter miniseries that ran in Monday G Fantasy in 2014. Those chapters have now been combined into a new Volume 0, which gives readers a chance to see the origins of these characters for themselves. Does it prove worthwhile? Let's find out. The story begins in the same way as the main series, with the protagonist Nene Yashiro looking into the rumors of the school history. It says that a female ghost called Hanako-san haunts the third floor girl's, girl's bathroom and even grant your wish should you find her. Nene seeks out Hanako-san and is surprised to find a ghost. It's actually a boy known as Hanako-kun, but it doesn't deter her for making her wish. And it turns out, Nene's first love dumped her because of her chunky reddish legs and now she wants to curse him to death. Hanako-kun is more than happy to grant his this wish and sets out to kill the ex-boyfriend. But Nene quickly realizes that what she wanted that wasn't to have her wish, granted but someone to talk to about the situation. Chapter 2 which switches focus on the Nene become friends with Hanako-kun, and they also introduce Ko. As in the main series, Ko is an exorcist who hopes to exorcise Hanako-kun before he can bring harm to any of the students. The two fight bitterly but her, perhaps Nene can prove a worthwhile intermediator who can prevent them from harming one another. The third and final chapter is more light-hearted and tells the story of Hanako-kun granting a different wish for Nene, one, with, one in which she wishes she was able to see the supernatural spirits around her. Hanako-kun wants her, and having his ability may put her in danger, but Nene insists on this regardless. When the relationships and personalities of the cast are a little different than what they eventually become, it's clear that the things that made totally bought Hanako-kun special were already present in this, this miniseries. Magaka team Adalro's artwork and, and storytelling may not be as polished, but what's on display here is still unique. This is especially true to the artwork which retains the busy style of Art Dalaro's later work where there is a lot jam into each panel, but it never feels like too much. The thick outlines used for the characters make them easily recognizable at a glance, and the reaction is easy to follow because of this style. The biggest change is that Hanako-kun doesn't seem to have the same emotionally charged backstory as his later counterpart does, but for a miniseries there is no time to explore it. But that's not a bad thing. Nene and Ko are more or less the same as their late, later selves, right, right down to Nene hating people, teasing her about her legs, a gag that I have always enjoyed. Even the rabbit like supernaturals called Moke make an appearance and are to, up to no good, as usual. Being so similar to the main series means this is an easy read for those who are already familiar with the world or setting. And to few differences, this simply feels like more of Tolibon Hanako-kun, which is no bad thing. Another incentive for the fans of Adalros to pick up this release is the inclusion of the underrelated one-shot called My Dear Living Dead. My Dear Living Dead is from 2013, a year before the team started work on Toleba Hanako-kun. The story is set in a world where zombies roam and the protagonist is a necromancer, set the missions for the church to eliminate them. This is a much darker story than I have expected from Adalro, but it proves engrossing all the same. The artwork for this one isn't as good as the Toliba Hanako-kun, either the main series or these three chapters, but it's still very detailed and captures the fight scenes and emotions of the cast well. If you're a fan of Idaro's work, then this is worth the price of emissions, and it's won, especially since it takes up the just under half the volume by itself. Toliba Hanako-kun Volume 0 comes to the West thanks to Yen Press and has been translated by Aleti Nibli and Anita, Anita Libli. Also works in the main series. The translation reads well when there are useful translations noted, notes included at the end of the book. Also included in its release is a color page at the beginning. Overall, Toliba Hanako-kun proves itself an attractive purchase for fans for both the series and Adalro's work. As a whole, there is plenty of fun to be had in seeing the humble start of this fantasy series, and once you're done with that, then include one shot will be there to provide something completely different. 9 over 10.